Okay, so now we're on to Descartes' second meditation. So just in the first meditation, as a review, remember that Descartes has doubted all of his beliefs. So he has doubted that his belief that sense perception shows reality because we're often the victims of illusion. He has doubted our ability to distinguish dreams from reality because we have no way of distinguishing these two things. And he's also doubted the notion that we have a good creator. So now he's on to the second night, again, meditating by the fire before he goes to bed, you know, in his dressing gown with a cup of coffee and maybe a pipe or who knows what else and a pad of paper and pen. And now he's thinking, what can I be really certain of? I've doubted all these things. So where does it leave him or us as the people following Descartes? through his meditations. So then what can Descartes be certain of? This is what he's going to think about in the second meditation. He's going to try to build his knowledge back up. So Descartes used to think that many things were true, that he was sitting by a fire, meditating, that he had a body, the sky is blue, that 2 plus 2 equals 4, etc. And now Descartes thinks that he can doubt all of these things. Right? So is there anything left that Descartes can believe? So what Descartes going to do is he's going to try to find one belief, one idea which he can be truly certain of. His belief being that if he can have this one true belief, that he can build all of the knowledge back from it. So Descartes starts to think, what can I be certain of? Is there one thing that I can be certain of? And he realizes that if he is doubting, then he's thinking. Now, before he was doubting, he was believing that something that might have been true or false is true. In that case, he was also thinking. And if he was imagining a false reality, he was still thinking. So no matter, not, no matter what he does, he is a thinking thing. So therefore, Descartes says... This is his famous phrase, I think, therefore I am. Cogito ergo sum. No matter what he does, he's thinking. And if he thinks, he must exist. Only a thing that exists can think. Therefore, he is a thinking thing. This is the one thing that he can be certain of. And from this one belief, he thinks he can build back all his other beliefs. And this is going to be a belief in the existence of God a belief uh, that his body exists and that he can perceive reality. So, right now Descartes is certain that he is a thinking thing that exists, and he considers this to be a clear and distinct perception. And a clear and distinct perception is the highest kind of perception for Descartes. And it's an observation about reality that must be true. There's no way it can be false. Right? There's, no poss there's no way that Descartes could not be a thinking thing, considering he's doing all this thinking. He must exist. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be a thinking thing? And that's what Descartes is going to try to tackle next. First off, right, one thing that a thinking thing can do is imagine. So when we use our imagination, we take all of our previous perceptions and build some new reality, right? So you could imagine a lion with the a body of a, with the head of a goat sticking out of it and a snake sticking out of it and you'd get a chimera, right? This is a combination of all these other animals. It's an imaginary animal, it never existed, but we can imagine it by bringing together all of these things we've perceived in the past. Um, so this is how imagination works. We can't imagine things we haven't seen before. You know, if you could imagine, for instance, a color you've never seen, you would not be able to do that. You can only imagine colors you've seen in the past. But you can rearrange the ideas you've already perceived. In addition to imagining things, you can also make judgments about things. And making judgments, a judgment, unlike an imaginary idea can be true or false. Imagination can't be true or false. It's just speculating about these things that don't actually exist. But a judgment either is true or false, right? 
A judgment might be that the sky is blue. A judgment might also be that the sky is red. Clearly, only one of these two judgments can possibly be true. And likewise, it's also another kind of thinking. There's also something Descartes talks about as a possibility that he calls innate ideas. These are very important to rationalists. And these are ideas that we have that we don't get through perception and we don't get through imagination. They're ideas that we're born with. They're intrinsic to what we are as thinking things. Okay, and so Descartes goes on to articulate his theory of representation because this is an important aspect of thinking. Presumably, when we're making judgments, we're, we have an idea in our head about what reality looks like. And that idea of reality is supposed to represent reality that exists, right? The world outside of us. So we see a black dog, right? And we have an idea of a black dog in our head. And we think that actually out there in the room, there is a dog which is black, right? And so there's supposed to be a, a kind of a parallel between what's going on in our head and what's going on in the world. And this is his theory of representation, a very important part of Descartes thinking. And it's very influential in Western philosophy and the way we think about reality. Okay, and so just to, to set up some of the limitations of the theory of representation, he thinks, okay, can I use my idea of representation, my ways of making judgments, to discover the essential nature of reality? So he picks up a ball of wax and he asks, you know, what can I know about the ball of wax? Can I know what makes it a ball of wax and not, say, a ball of clay? What is essential to the wax? And so, you know, Descartes looks at it, he touches it, he feels it, he smells it, tastes it, and he perceives all these things about it, that it's smooth, greasy, it has a honey smell, and so on. But none of these things capture the essence of what it is as a ball of wax. If he puts it by the fire, it melts, it becomes gooey, and it no longer has a smell. So what perception about the ball of wax shows the true reality of the ball of wax? The only thing that's common between the ball of wax that's hard and the ball of wax that's melted is the fact that it takes up space. And so this is what Descartes says is essential of all bodies in the world, is that they take up space. But we can't use our perception to immediately recognize anything essential about it yet. So that's where Descartes left off, right? This is the end of his second meditation. All he really knows still is that he's a thinking thing and that thinking things can do certain things. But he still doesn't know anything else. He doesn't know that God exists. He doesn't know that the world exists. And he's going to have to prove those things in his third meditation. Thanks for listening.